To the casual observer, this may well look like an old Rover 800, and it is. But it's only when you walk around the side of this car that you realize things are far from normal. For one, it looks like two of the doors have been nicked. Two, it has these rather large 17 inch alloy wheels. And as we start to look at the back end, uh, you know something is indeed very different about this Rover. But it's when you walk up to the boot and read the badge on the back that you really know what this car is. This is a Rover two-door coupe turbo Vitesse, and there's only nine of them known to exist. It is exceptionally rare. Um, you have those twin pipes back there. They even used to have a tow bar. But uh, this was owned by a chap locally, and now it's uh, been sold to me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's take you, take you uh, guys around her. So, sunroof, it does work. Now, if we open her up, you can see you've got this massive vault door. It's absolutely huge. And the interior is uh, everything you'd expect of a 90s, what, 90s rover. Fifty Shades of Beige. Sounds like a porno movie for 70s people. People in the 70s. But, uh, yeah, she's done quite a lot of mileage. It's 162,000 miles. Um, the dash is cracked. The seats are faded. The plastic's horrible. It's even got cruise control, though. Actually, no, that's just to adjust your clock. I'm kidding. Um, but, uh, yeah, as far as I can see, there is this absolutely hideous faux walnut. It's absolutely ghastly. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, this is an exceptionally rare car and a highly desirable vehicle at that. Here's all your climate control settings. It doesn't have air conditioning uh, because that would be an even bigger nightmare. Or maybe it did have air conditioning that's been taken off. I don't know. I don't know a lot about these cars. All I know is that it's rare. We've got these lovely leather seats, and you can see there's actually quite a lot of legroom back here. This is essentially a larger version of the Rover Tomcat in a lot of ways. It's got the same engine. Um, it's also the same gearbox, I believe, as the Tomcat, which is actually a Peugeot box. Sorry about all the, rack, the uh, crinkly sounds from this tarpaulin. But uh, yeah, I believe it's the same gearbox. Uh, Kevin Norman will tell me in the comments what box it actually is, but I cannot remember. Right, so you've got your radio controls, up your volume, etc. Headlights, wipers, all the boring stuff. It's time to get to the interesting bit, though. The engine. Now, down here... Oh, God, that sounded awful. Is your bonnet release. And we're going to... Oh, yes, uh, look at this. Definitely factory window switch. <clears throat> Ooh. It comes with free shades. I will take those. Just uh, pop the bonnet for you guys. I forget where the catch is on these. Bugger, where is it? I'm exceptionally blind. Oh well. <laughs> so under the bonnet we have a T16 engine. This is exactly the same engine as the um, Rover Tomcat. Identical. This one's actually had a brand new turbo. Now you see how tiny these turbos are. Don't worry, we'll do something about that. Um, got a cold air intake. Intake. So these are, in my opinion, the best engine Rover ever, ever made. Ion block, twin cam. These have been rated. The blocks have been rated over a thousand horsepower. The engines have made nine hundred horsepower, and I do think a thousand fifteen hundred is very possible with the right mods and a very large bank account. Cold air intake here, definitely not standard, but it's an improvement. But uh, this engine actually does run very, very sweetly, which we'll show you in a minute. But uh, yeah, T16 is a great engine. You do look after this. Mother, you will definitely approve. <laughs> well, mother probably won't, but whatever. So, uh, yeah, th um, the sill doesn't really exist anymore. Now, it's actually just rotted in the bottom half because um, it was sat on a grass verge for three years um, and it has genuinely just rotted on the bottom half I'm not going to do a sunroof but under here is all rock solid the boot which we'll show you in a moment is also really solid so that is no problem got this big spoiler here which I really do like the look of 
Would you mind popping the boot for me? We're actually on a time schedule and a battery schedule because I don't have the right battery in my phone, my camera rather, because this is all sort of last minute. So you can see all these gutters are actually extremely solid. All around the screens are very good. We'll have a look. There is water in there, but it is in fact remarkably solid in here. All here is very, very good. As I sell it, it seals and jacking points at once, which is no problem, because I have a good friend who's a welder, and he can do this, no worries at all. Even if I ploughed some a couple of grand into it, it'd still be worth it. Um, it is a lovely car. Bit of bubbling and rust going on there, but it's not horrific, it's pretty darn good. Um, would you mind firing up briefly? A bit tickety, but it does die down when it warms up. But that is a very sweet engine. Very, very sweet. Nice. Here's your intercooler down here, and your rad. Go around the back quickly. It's discs all round as well. Yeah, a couple times. Nice. They're just such a smooth engine. Really smooth engine. Just a fantastic engine, really. Yeah, kill it, kill it. But yeah, I mean, you can see all the wings, all these inner wings are very solid. And the good thing is that uh, these wings actually bolt off, which is nice, unlike the SD1. And these wings are standard 800, I believe. With the way Rover works, I expect they are. What I'd really like to do, if they're the same bonnet type, is get an early Tomcat bonnet with the metal bit instead of this plastic grill and put that on. I think that'd look really nice. Um, as for other rust issues, as I said, the sills are toast, jacking points are toast. These are the sporty wheels, 17s, so not going to change them. They are discs all round, but the good thing about these is um, the parts are astronomically cheap. Um, I think a full set of discs for a, a Pazron 800 is like 200 quid, brand new, and the sports pack's like 300 quid for everything, lines, everything, and they're really easy to work on, they're just basic nuts and bolts. But you can see... The actual arch structure is very good. So yeah, you cannot just you cannot lose with a car like this. I mean you can, but no, it's it's a nice car. It is a very nice car. Right, we have juice. Don't know if it's enough to start it, we'll find out. Yep. You drive it. I'm not used to modern clutches. Well, all my cars are from the 70s, you know, I'm not yeah. used to this. Yeah, there he is. He looks suave in that. I'm about to tell him, actually. Apparently the clutch uh, pedal, Floor. is it not getting drive? I might have to do, um... No way. I, I don't know how to use these seats either. <laughs> Is there no clutch at all pedal? Not really. Apparently it does drive, so I'll just put it in gear I'll and... drive it, yeah. Yeah. We'll see, I'm going to shut this door now. Okay. Don't wind the window down, in case it doesn't work again. Ah, it'll be fine. It drove here. Big moment. It is a sexy looking car, it really is. My friend's more keen on the 190 Merc. I think he's going to just put it in gear. So is there no clutch pedal at all? No clutch. No clutch pedal? No. Have you worked it to see if it pumps up? Nice. Floppy, floppy. Yeah, have to in gear then.
I don't have fluid in there. Is there any fluid in there? Uh, fluid Thank you. No, fluid no. Cylinder's gone, clearly. Yeah. I'm not ready for burnouts yet. Mm. <laughs> Front wheel drive, anyway. <laughs> there it goes on the lorry. This, uh, not looking her best right now, but uh, nevertheless, it's <laughs> at least it's saved. I mean, it was going to be. I'm not sure what I'll do. I really want to restore it, but money and we'll just see. We'll, we'll see. We'll play it by ear. Unfortunately, parts are available. You can buy seals and everything else. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. It's all on, loaded. Dangly bit of wire on the back. Hopefully, that can come off or. Be unplugged somehow. I don't. I don't know. Uh, your, your yeah, something like that. Oh, I can actually look under it now. That's actually not bad. That is not gaping rust like I thought it would be. That's actually quite solid. All the boot floors and everything are, are rather good. Suspension mountings aren't bad. That's not a bad car. That's Honda quality for you, not Rover quality. <laughs> uh, yeah, all good. Yeah, so as you can see, it runs sweet as a nut. Um, the clutch, clutch release bearing is noisy, uh, so that I'll need doing as well as a clutch and a cylinder. It is a restoration project, um, but I've decided it's a project I won't be doing. Um, I rescued the car. It's not going to be scrapped. That's all that matters. It's a rare car. There's like 20 of them left. Um, so... If anyone's interested, do contact me because uh, it's going to go to someone who uh, can actually, you know, restore it and get it back to its form former glory. But uh, yeah, it's uh, all done, all done, all stashed away safe. It's a nice looking car, very nice looking car. I've got some horrible camera glare there, but there we are. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all that sort of shit. Um, yeah, follow my social medias below. And uh, until next time, bye bye.